On today's episode of Survival Dispatch News, we're discussing the ATF pistol brace regulation that went into effect January 13th, 2023. Hey guys, today's video is brought to you by Division 3 Weapons, a custom multifaceted firearms business with two locations, Osteen, Florida and Orange City, Florida. They can do it all. It's your one-stop shop for anything customized with firearms. And we're back. And once again, today we're discussing the ATF pistol brace ruling that went into effect January 13th, just uh, five days ago. We're recording this on uh, January the 18th. Uh, we're joined by Elaine in Tennessee and Jason in North Georgia. Thanks for being with us again, guys. Um, Absolutely. I'm just gonna give the Cliff Notes version and then y'all can weigh in. Uh, essentially, uh, ATF rules on AR and AK pistol braces has been a moving target for 10 years. They've been allowed, they've not been allowed, you know, so on and so forth. So starting January 13th, there is a 120 day amnesty period where people who own uh, AR or AK braces uh, can file to get a tax stamp uh, for those uh, guns as SBRs, short barrel rifles. Uh, there's somewhere between 10 million and 40 million of these devices out there. Uh, ironically enough, SB Tactical, who's by far and away the number one producer of pistol braces, was recently hacked and had all of their customer data stolen. So you can hypothesize who that is till the cows come home. Um, I can tell you, you know, in the, the last five days, I've been in a number of gun stores. I've been looking online. I've been looking on our distributors for survival dispatch as well. ARs and AK pistols are like gone, uh, none available anywhere as, as a direct result of this. So essentially, uh, anybody who owns an AR or AK pistol has a, a small number of choices. None of them are really palatable. Uh, number one, as I mentioned, they can file uh, for a tax stamp as an SBR. Uh, they don't have to pay the $200. It's waived because you get amnesty. Uh, so the only pro that comes out of that is that you're not going to be a felon facing up to 10 years in prison if you get caught with one of these devices. The cons to it are that your property, uh, your gun, and your fingerprints are now in the NFA uh, registry, National Gun Registry, for lack of a better term. Uh, NFA's National Firearms Act, for those who aren't familiar with it. But the cons are pretty significant, um, you know, in addition to that aspect of being in that gun registry. Um you can remove the pistol brace and destroy the mount on the gun so that it can't be reinstalled. So PCCs, pistol caliber carbines, a lot of them have a little piece of pick rail on the back. You have to remove that if it's welded, whatever the case may be, so that the pistol brace can't be reinstalled. You can destroy the gun, you know, maybe cut it in half and take pictures of it. You can surrender it to the ATF or you can replace the barrel with something that's 16 inches or longer. So now you're converting from an SBR to a carbine. Um, at the end of the day, you know, this is uh, <clears throat> in direct contradiction to the SCOTUS decision last year on Chevron deference, which basically says Congress makes laws, not alphabet agencies. So I don't expect this is going to hold up in the long run when it's challenged in court. GOA, FPC are already mobilizing to take this on. Um, but that's where we're at with this. And I'll just make a couple quick comments and then we'll open up the conversation there is a Hail Mary available where we could all write to our Congress critters, ask them to leverage the Congressional Review Act, which allows the House of Representatives to unilaterally squash a regulation that is projected to have an impact of 100 plus million dollars. It does not require Senate approval, does not require the executive branch to weigh in or anything like that. Uh, the reason I say it's a Hail Mary is I've been saying for years, Republicans and Democrats, two different sides of the same coin. Uh, I don't believe that uh, that'll go anywhere, but I mean, the only goal is you never score the shots you never take. It was a Wayne Gretzky quote. So it's probably worthwhile at least sending a letter off. So guys, what are your thoughts on this mess? Uh, so, so I have deeply rooted in my DNA, a, a an opposition to being told what to do by any government agency. So, 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 and the, the, the craziness of it is that like even the pistol braces from the beginning, I thought that that's the dumbest thing I've ever seen in my life. Like, 
okay, you're telling me that now this is a pistol brace and putting it against my shoulder is like an illegal act at, at one point in time. That's so right. stupid. Um, and you're now you're telling me that this thing that I've I've purchased with my own money that I've worked hard on and I've 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 paid taxes on the income that I've made and I've paid sales tax on buying the thing all this stuff that I've paid to have this thing if I modify it in any way I'm now breaking the law to, to the to uh, because I've modified my personal property I find it I find it outrageous I I find it so so stupid um, that I can hardly put words to it. <laughs> Well, good comments, Jason. But, you know, something else that's kind of deeply rooted into this is this bill or rule um, is not going to reduce crime. No, in, no in, not at all. <laughs> not in, a little. Any, uh, yeah. in fact, it has the potential to create criminals. Yes. With, um, you know, Victim, law, law abiding crimes will be committed. Yes. Yeah. You know, <laughs> for having an object that we paid for you can become a felon, mm -hmm. right? So th there's no real, there's no real good of this whatsoever. And, and the third point I want to make is shall not be infringed. Yeah. It's pretty clear, right? They're, they're, they're overseeing that and they're, 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 they're infringing. It yeah. shall not be infringed period. Yeah. So are, are you all familiar with the uh, Matt from CRS firearms YouTube channel? I think he's no. in Wisconsin. He, he, he's quite a bit younger than we are, but uh, he's going, he's being put through hell by the ATF uh, because he did a review of, on this thing called a key card where, you know, it was a metal card and it had the outline um, of a piece of metal that you could cut out use as a sear and an ar and make it into a full auto they're saying that he right. was you know, doing this sort of stuff he's got really good attorneys though and he had a recent video that was like hit me like a ton of bricks he said we're looking at this whole thing with the atf and other government agencies the wrong way he said that it begins with we the people it doesn't say we the government it says we the people Mm -hmm. So we, the people grant the government, you know, the power to do these things. It's not the other way around where we, the government says you can't do this, that, and the other thing. Somehow we've ended up with the system turned 180 degrees on its head. When you think of it from that context, it's a, that's why it struck me because the constitution, it doesn't grant us rights. It, yeah. it, it grants us liberty against the government telling us what we can do. So the I'm government that's right. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's a really interesting perspective. And then I'll just make a second comment, turn it back over to y'all. The, the tin foil hat side of me, you know, uh, thinks that what Lane touched on as far as turning honest people into criminals is concerned. You know, there, there's an element of our society uh, that I believe would be very, very happy to take millions of gun owners who don't vote for left-wing stuff, generally speaking, and turn them into felons so that uh, they can't vote and they can't own guns anymore. I mean, mm -hmm. I, I, there's, so there's a part of me, based on all the craziness that's happened, you, you know, in recent years and years gone by, that, you know, there are crappy things like that at play as well. Yeah, there's, okay. there's, there's clearly an agenda. It's not to make the the country a safer place they, they don't care about any of that like that is not the the goal the focus is making they, they're not trying to stop mass shootings and all that because this these laws are going to do none of that it's not going to help be helpful in any way other than to create more felons <laughs> but people that have committed no crimes up until a day and all, suddenly now they're felons That's and right. it's, it as a as a private citizen though you know, let's think outside of our, our, the three of us as a private citizen, you really only have two options. Um, you, you can either get rid of your short barrel, put a 16 inch barrel on it and get out of the, the, the spotlight altogether, mm -hmm. or you can, um, file for the free tax stamp and go that route. Mm -hmm. Uh, nobody that I know is going to destroy their gun. Nobody that I know is going to destroy their brace. Um, no one's going to go turn it in either. <laughs> nobody's nobody's going right. to hand in. So really the private citizen, the average Joe private citizen has two options. Um, 
and you know, I or there is there is another option. You can wait until 119 days and see if any litigation comes up and gets this thing to reversed. And on the 119th day, at that point, you make your decision what you're going to do. Hmm. And, yeah, and, that, and that's that's a really legitimate option to undertake. The Supreme Court's already ruled that a national gun registry is not consistent with our Constitution. So, you know, these do-gooders who are targeting law-abiding gun owners are trying to leverage the NFA into a national database registry of guns. Truly, yeah. that's, that's what this is, you know. So even yeah. if I'm wrong and they're not trying to disenfranchise millions of people, you know, from being able to vote and own guns because they're trying to turn us into felons, at the very least, you're now in a gun registry, period, full stop. Like when you go and and buy a firearm, which is always a face-to-face deal in this country because of your next background check, that data is not recorded, you know, at the federal level for who owns what gun and who bought one gun, that gun, the record sits with the FFL and you yeah. know, it's, there is no national gun registry except for there is this registry full of NFA items, which uh, there are a couple lawsuits un- underway. One of them is actually Matt from CRS's uh, attorneys um, ha- are making a case to repeal the NFA once and for all. Mm-hmm. So, Yeah. Yeah. yeah I it's think gonna, I, you guys I, are on. Go ahead. Go ahead. No, go ahead. Um, yeah, I think you. I think we're all on the same page about the the anti gun uh, argument. It's it's not logical. It doesn't make any sense. Making uh, firearms in general, or certain firearms, or uh, modifications to firearms, making those things illegal is not going to stop any crime. Um, it might encourage people to commit more crimes because people can't defend themselves anymore. That might be a thing. But I I, yeah. I, I find it crazy because there's I think there's two, maybe, maybe more, maybe there's two types of people. I think one group of people that are anti-gun are probably, they don't really care about the world becoming anti-gun. They don't care about that. The, the premise of that at all. All they want to do is profit from whatever this agenda is in some way, whether it pow- be power or money in some way. Mm. The other group of people is probably people that are legitimately anti-gun and they think you know they're they're on board with this premise of getting rid of the guns making them illegal is going to stop crime and and they maybe are are genuinely trying to make the world a better place and maybe they're coming from a good place but it's just a not it's not a logical argument you know if you ever ask some more some of these people if you ever say okay there's a bump in the night someone comes into your house with a gun what do you do And, you know, they won't even want to have the conversation because they just assume, okay, that's either, you know, that's never going to happen to me kind of attitude. And that's right. And not logical. Right. It's not. What were you fixing to say there, Lane? I I lost it. So, (laughs) (laughs) well, I I can tell you a point that I've raised over the years with people who are anti-gun and whatnot. And I've said to them, well, it doesn't matter if you're pro-gun or anti-gun. The fact of the matter is is that the highest law on the land says that we have an, a right to firearms and the genie is now out of the bottle and you're not putting that genie back in the bottle. So when you take guns away from law abiding citizens, the only people who have guns left are the bad guys. Full stop yeah. in the story. So when you look at crime rates uh, f- related to guns, it it's not legal gun owners. It's, it's the people who are, you know, utilizing stolen guns. And here's the thing. Those aren't stolen guns from guys like us in the most in most cases. It's guns coming across our southern border. There's mm-hmm. a huge trade in illegal firearms coming in at the southern border that nobody, you know, at least the mainstream media doesn't want to talk about. Yeah. That's the source of the crime. It's the not us. Yeah. But regardless, you're not putting the genie back in the bottle. Period. Yeah. No matter what side you fall on. Mm-hmm. So, so and depending what? whose numbers you want to believe. You know, I, I hear frequently you hear there's all oh, there's 400 million, 500 firearms in circulation, but there are ATF agents on record who say that they have over a billion records of firearms. I mean, you can search that up and I can't speak to the veracity of it, but we don't even know how many guns are in circulation in America. What we do know is there's so many of them, you're not <laughs> taking them away from the bad guys. And when you take yeah. them away from us then you just made everybody vulnerable. Yeah. You know? It's yeah, like, just we're going down a rabbit hole here, sure. but one of the things the mainstream media 
doesn't like to do is publicize case, publicize cases of a good guy stopping a bad guy, you know, with a gun. And yeah. yet it happens every single day in America. I mean, and some of them just stand out to me, you know, like the the guy who was 70 some odd years old on the west side of Fort Worth a few years ago, you know, and this delinquent comes in and, and gets off two rounds with a shotgun. And the 70 year old guy, you know, he's whatever, 40 feet away, one shot took him out. If yeah. he hadn't done that, who knows how many people in that church would have died. But, yeah. you know, the anti-gun people, you know, they don't, they've got their blinders on. Yeah. You know? They're assuming, they're assuming someone's going to take care of them, like the police, you know, as if they, they can count on a complete stranger giving up their life for them, which some will. There's a lot of good cops out there. Absolutely. But not there. But yeah. somebody, I here we go again. I'm going to quote somebody, and I can't remember who they are to give them credit. But somebody once said, "You're your own first responder." Yeah, yeah. How long does it take for a, a police officer to get to my house? Like on average, probably yeah. ten, fifteen. That at, at, on a good day, you know. Well, nothing. It, ten to fifteen minutes. <laughs> of course well, not. And and look at our place around the corner from you in Georgia. Yeah. The there's a road with the same name in yeah. lj as well as where we are that yeah. gets mixed up constantly yeah like, i mean constantly uh, they'd never find us in time yeah and i mean like my phone doesn't even work half the time so like i couldn't even call for help if i right. wanted to <laughs> see, see uh, here's a time for a shameless plug that's why everybody needs one of these garmin inreach many two satellite communicators because when we were with your wife last week or the week before looking at properties in the mountains yep. that was the only device that had connectivity believe it or not uh, I can, uh, I can personally vouch for those. I've used those in some very remote places in Baja, Mexico, and they 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 get the job done. We yeah. were off the grid, uh, not just the time that we were looking at that property with your wife, but from the time we lost service to go to that property, stop the clock, and then start again when we went to leave for well over an hour mm -hmm. uh, of road time with no signal at all, but that thing. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. but that's that's. I mean, getting back to your your own first responder, you know, uh, the only thing that's going to stop a bad guy with a gun is a, a good guy with a gun. Like, that's pretty much it. And that's probably the only thing that Wayne Lapierre has ever said that I agree with. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I mean, in all, all regulations and laws and rules against suppressors and pistol braces and stuff, it, it, it changes nothing. It doesn't do anything as far as the making the gun more or less lethal or it, it's just... Well, uh, I, I, see, I see potential for one good thing to come out of this. And that is, I think this is going to wind up in litigation. It's going to wind up in court. And once and for all, finally, we will end up with an ultimate decision on the brace scenario. Legal for now. Or not. <laughs> and then, so, yeah. Right yeah. now, everybody's still in limbo. Every, nobody really wants to pull the trigger to make a pun and, <laughs> and do it right away. Yeah. Uh, but once this finds its way into the courthouse, uh, I, I think we might maybe wind up with an actual final decision one way or the other mm -hmm. on the whole brace issue. And that that's entirely possible, but here we go again. Here's another rabbit hole, the SCOTUS Bruin decision, B-R-U-E-N, which uh, originated in New York, basically stated that states cannot do things like limit the capacity of magazines and whatnot. And yet, since that SCOTUS decision last year, you have multiple states thumbing their nose, you know, at the Supreme Court saying, ah, we're going to go ahead and do it anyway. And it, it's going to get challenged. It's going to fail once it winds its way through the court system because SCOTUS has already made the decision. But it, it doesn't stop these guys, you know, people, that are hell bent and determined to disarm America from yeah. doing stuff that is clearly not legal under our constitution. They'll take mm -hmm. a run in as long as they can. And here's the problem lane. You're right. Maybe that's a good thing that comes out of it, but how many people's uh, suffer negative consequences between now and then? Yep. That, yep. That's, that's the thing, right? And they don't give a shit. Pardon my, yeah, how they don't run on us for in between now and then. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, All right, guys, I, listen, I uh, appreciate y'all's time once again. Uh, absolutely. And we, we could do like a, a dozen spinoffs from this episode alone on sure. infringements on our civil liberties. And maybe we'll uh, discuss that at a future point in time. But 
Thanks again, guys. And we'll be back soon with another episode of Survival Dispatch News.